realizing just how how easy it is to change, how easy it is to change the things that you think, the way that you behave, the norms that you follow. This uh, quote from Aristotle, he says, uh, if a man knows not where he goes, no wind is favorable. It's Ooh. like, if you haven't considered what it is that you want to want in life, basically you're just the cleverest rat in the room, right? You're... Your desires are determined by the confused chemical signals of your body and the way you've dealt with past trauma and social norms and paths of least resistance, all of these things. That's what's determining your behavior right now if yeah. you haven't lived a consciously designed life. And the, the main thing that I've learned is that, look, life doesn't have to be lived by default. You can design it. You can go out of your way to assess, okay, what's underneath this stone? Oh, fucking hell, that's really ugly. I, I would rather not look at that. And then you give it a bit of a clean, right? You sort of clean it away and you go, okay, right, let's have a go again. For every 20 stones that you turn over to have a look and do some introspective work, 19 of them are disgusting and have something terrifying that sits underneath. Yeah. Maybe one of them's good. And you go, actually, do you know what it is? My curiosity, I really like that. Or my empathy, I really like that. Right. Most of them are desires that other people have given to you the things that you don't actually want to do for yourself. And that's why it's scary work. It's scary work to admit that you're wrong. It's scary work to look at assessing why I do the things that I do. There's also the burden of having to make a living, right? And that requires so much of your day. Think about the amount of time that if we were talking about before that most people who are living, there's a large percentage of people that are listening to this right now that are living their life doing something for a living that they don't want to do and it's not enjoyable and it's burdensome. Well, that's eight hours a day plus commuting. That is most of your day. So most of your day is spent in an undesirable way. So because of that, it leaves very little time to course correct. Yes. And the, the more yes. you develop responsibilities, whether it's a family that you have to support or whether it's a mortgage you have to pay off or a car loan or whatever it is, the more of those things you accumulate, the more difficult it is to course correct. And that's very, very important for people to understand is that the further you go down this path, like you might have this job and it might suck, but then the boss pulls you into the office and goes, hey, uh, Mike, I'm, uh, we're going to give you a new responsibility, a new raise, but we're going to require more hours. You know, it's a 10% bump in pay, but I want you to understand that, you know, this is, uh, you're going to have to do a lot of overtime, you're going to have to do a lot, and you start thinking, well, I'm moving up, but you're not. Deeper into the trench yeah, you go. You, yes, yes. That's, that's so important to understand, is that the amount of time, like the amount of focus, the amount of, the, the amount of hours your mind is spent doing something you don't want to do, that's not going to fucking change unless you make it change. You're going to have to do something about that. And the more you commit to that and the more time spent doing that, the harder it's going to be to make those changes. And you're going to start to cope. Yes. Outside of that. That's where these kind of conversations are so valuable because if you have done th some things you don't want to do anymore and you used to do them and I have been the same way and most people are that way. We're not born into this job. This is not something that was bestowed upon us by someone else. We've, we've, we crafted it. We figured it out and through step by step, you go back and listen to my early podcasts. They're fucking terrible. You know, like if you went back and watched my early podcast and said, one day, this is going to be the biggest podcast in the known world. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? This is horseshit. Exactly. And that's why it's out there still. I like the fact that they're out there. Yeah, me too. Go me too. I love the fact that it's still yeah. there. But another thing to consider is the fact that if people are succeeding, even slightly, in a job that they hate, think about how good you could be if it was something that you really, really cared about. Right. Think about how amazing you could be if you pursued something that you genuinely had existential uh, simpatico with, right? as opposed to something that you detest, yeah. or are just not that fussed about. If you're in the chasm of, competent, of uh, comfortable complacency, just how good could you be if this was something that you loved? Yeah. Holy fuck. It's just so hard for people to course correct, and it's so hard for people to have like sort of a top-down objective view of where they're going and what they're doing and how they're thinking and whether or not they like it. Most of the time, people need some sort of a catastrophic event, some kind of sort of a near-death experience or a life-changing event or a breakup or being fired or a psychedelic experience, like something that just blows the paradigm completely into a million pieces and you're, you're forced to look at it again. That's falling out of the bottom of the region beta paradox, right? You yes. go through the bottom and you bounce out of there, yeah. right? That's what you're looking to do. But I think that... <clears throat> 
when you think about how locked in to people's lives they are and concerns about making changes. I'm 34 now. I moved to America when I was 33, right? 33 years old. That would have been, you know, past the time when you're supposed to have responsibilities. Now, yeah, I didn't have any restrictions or whatever to to be able to come out here in terms of uh, family and kids and stuff like that. But still, moving to a new country on your own at 33 is something that most people would have been, uh, that's a little bit of an odd decision to make, perhaps. There are opportunities and there are people that reach out that have made huge changes in their lives. I'm sure you've seen them as well. Way, way, way into late life. There is sure. no trench that's been dug so deep that you can't get yourself out of yes. it. Yes. But it is easier the earlier that you do it. That's way easier. That's just a sad, yeah. a sad fact that if you're able to nip something in the bud before it becomes too entrenched, before you have too many responsibilities that make it harder because you've got to keep on grinding in order at the shitty job that you don't like while you've got to side hustle, while you've got to raise the kids, while you've got to pay the mortgage, while you've got to do all of the rest of the things and the adulting. It would be easier, but it's never going to be too late. It's never too late. If you're alive, you can get better. If you're alive right now, you can improve your, your condition. You can improve your situation, and it starts with improving the way you think. That's the most important thing. The way you think of things, the way you think of things, the way you address things, you've got to change that. And you've got to look at things objectively and you've got to be brutally honest with yourself. And the more you bullshit yourself, the more it's going to be difficult. You're, you're, you're literally throwing weights on your back and making it harder to, to move forward. Mm. Yeah, it's because people's opinions are so highly, highly held as the most important thing that they do. That's the concern, though. The fact that in order to say that I've been wrong, it feels like destruction. But it's, it's not true. Your opinions are just a thing that you're bouncing around in your head. And you can't, you can't think of them as your lungs or your bones or your eyeballs. It's not. It, this is a, another Sam stops. Harris thing, right, where he says, uh, what are you going to think next? You don't know. You right. don't know what you're going to think right, next. Right, right, right. Right? So, okay, so does that mean that you're in control of your thoughts? Well, you kind of are, but you're also kind of not. Right. And if there was somebody that was walking down the street saying things and you couldn't predict what they were going to say next, would you trust what that person says? Uh, probably not. And you can't predict what's coming up next. Your thoughts are no more of a part of you than the weather is to the sky, right? Mm. The weather flows through the sky and you know that the sky is there above it. But the weather is just a current state. It's not the sky. It's just a part of it. But you do develop momentum from thinking in a specific way, whether it's good momentum or bad momentum. You can get good momentum by choosing good paths in life, by course correcting, by adding beneficial and healthy activities to your life. And you grow and change because of that. You know, I've talked to so many people that have started doing yoga. And they're like, oh, my God, it's changed my life. It changed the way I think about things, changed the way I interact with people. But by forcing yourself to do a thing, you now develop momentum. And that can be applied to all sorts of different aspects of your life. And also by finding something that you deeply enjoy and that becomes satisfying to you, you enrich your overall experience on earth. And that, in turn, enriches the way you communicate with others. It can enhance your relationships. It can enhance your job performance. Your, you, it, it just changes your choices because you have less frustration. We're rolling the clock forward as well, thinking about how you could impact other people. Yeah. What would the world be like if you showed up 1% better? Okay, right. who would that impact? How far would the ripples go? Yeah. You know, listening to your show was a big part of the reason why I started mine. Then 500 episodes later, Modern Wisdom's got me out to America and it's done all that. And how many people has that impacted? And then how many people have they impacted? Yeah. So there's kind of a, almost a compulsion or a necessity for people to do what only they can do. So I learned about uh, Salvador Dali and just how weird that guy was. So Salvador Dali, his parents, about 10 months or 11 months before he was born, had a kid called Salvador, and it died. Died Ooh. very shortly after being born, and they very quickly got pregnant again and called the new son Salvador, and they were adamant that he was a reincarnation of the baby that had died. Oh, boy. I mean, that's where you've started, okay? Right. That's where you began. 